Hey there. I just <clears throat> I just spent um, a long time doing well not that long do, doing and encoding a, a video that I, I don't think I'm gonna keep. Uh, I'll just try again to do something. I, I wanted to do something with this program that just just on its own like um, some math things. And uh, I thought so, an interesting thing, one of the interesting things anyway, interesting concepts, is one that I mentioned the last time, and that is the, the idea of the dot product. If you recall, I gave it a definition even. Uh, if you have any, any two vectors, uh, A remembers the color now. Another uh, one <coughs> B, which shall be this color and I put I joined them like that on purpose uh, then I, I said the following was uh, the definition of a dot product. Now I don't want you to get alarmed by the various uh, textual features that uh, might come up uh, while doing this. What color should I use for for this? You know, like explanations. I defined. In the dot product may be defined as I think uh, like a chalky yellow, a yellow but a great green yellow. Yeah. Um, I guess I can use our A and B. Uh, suppose A equals, uh, I think I should just use A. A, X, and A. Oh no, but then I can't use my subscript. Okay, so, see I got a, a subscript feature. <coughs> And it will be in A's color green. And uh, B equals X two Y two. And B's color. Almost. Uh, then the dot product oh. it's important to indicate when these things are vectors and when not. Although it's pretty obvious from the notation. Then A, hmm, I should have put this all, this will have to be in a mixture. What's the mixture of purple and green? Oh, it's just white. See that? <laughs> 
equals, oh, I don't have equals by definition. Uh, X or the other side, different way. This and Y. And then I can use the colors to emphasize what's going on. So this would be green. Did I just add that? Oh, I hit cancel. My cancel's on the wrong side, I think. That's one. I'll put the white one over here and the floor I've got the green out. And X. Two purple. And then plus Y two. Put that there like that, and I'm gonna put a plus sign. Okay, so you can see here uh, with that color coding, it's all simplified and becomes perfectly obvious. Now that's one way to define the dot product. And you saw the uh, square of uh, the you know, A times A gives its magnitude squared and so on. However, there's another way to go about defining this. Now, see, now, one thing you can prove, uh, just like through algebra, and, you know, about algebraic manipulation and so on, is the following. Is that this is equal to Now these are not, these are actually scalar quantities, but I don't, I don't want to. I could put bars, I guess. Well, for now I will, but I'll drop them later. Now a small dot. And white. Okay. So the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of theta, which is the angle here. I told you that I have some tricks, tricks up my sleeve. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, what does that tell you? Well, if you look at this thing here, Forget about B for a second. A cos theta, right, would be the length from here to wherever it's perpendicular. If you drop a perpendicular from A here, be an ugly color. Here, let's say. This here length is a cos theta. That length should be perfect. Well, I could, oh my God. 
can't believe we have a hmm. that's a cos theta is this length. You, you get the idea anyway, right? So what this equation says, or this term, whatever, <clears throat> is that it's the projection of A along B, in the amount of A mass along B, times the magnitude of B. Okay? That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is uh, if you extended A infinitely, and projected B to a perpendicular along that line, which would be right here maybe. That's the projection of B. That's B cos theta, right? That line. So it's also the projection of B along A times the magnitude of A. Uh, so, in a sense, uh, there's a symmetry involved there. Now, uh, what I'd like to show you, if I can, might be might take too long, is that in, instead of starting with this as the definition of the dot product, we can start with not this exactly, but the idea of the projection that the dot product is the projection of one vector along the direction of another vector times the magnitude of the two vectors. We take that as the definition and we can end up proving this. And uh, why is that an advantage? Well, for one, it's kind of interesting. Uh, but uh, for a second, in proving that, right, without any x's and y's or anything, uh, then uh, we immediately get the fact, without even having to write anything down, uh, that this product is uh, a constant no matter how you move the two vectors, you know, move the coordinate space around. You rotate the coordinate space this product will remain the same. It's not obvious, looking at it this way, that that's true, right? Even, well, with this, it's a bit more obvious, but we haven't proved that yet, and that's not so easy to prove. If we take this, the other definition, then this is a natural consequence, that in two dimensions, that's certainly the case, uh, and it's also true in any more greater number of dimensions because two vectors always lie within only one plane. Two vectors. There could be more. <clears throat> so I'm going to see. I'll try and do what I can in time. Yeah, so let's just take that as the definition. Okay. Well, hang on a sec. I've written down here. Uh, we're going to take the definition as um, Okay, just, just as I have written AB cos theta, the projection of A along B times A, uh, B, or vice versa, however you want to look at it. So we need some vectors. One of the things I did, by the way, besides fixing this color thing, is um, this. 
I can grab these things now. In fact, I can grab the way I had uh, done the problem with the the characters already included any, any other objects that were of type um, uh, graphics object, but it turns out that the graph doesn't have any graphics objects. I had to turn the arrow into a graphics object in order to make that work. Uh, and here's our B. And that wasn't so easy to turn out. All right. So we'll take that as the definition, just as the definition. So definition. Definition. Scalar product. Right here. So just as before, I write it down. A, B equals A, B equals theta. All right, so what can we say about that at this point? Um, well, the first thing uh, to note, right, is that it's symmetric. So one thing, just by just just by the, the way it's been defined, uh, we have that uh, a. B equals B A. Okay, so that's one rule, like an axiom, that's uh, satisfied by by our definition. I need a coffee or repeat last for something. I'm going to have to drop the arrows. It's too slow. Okay, so uh, it's commutative, symmetric. Okay. Um, now, what I'd like to uh, prove to you now is that it's also, given this definition, distributed. Uh, so I want to prove. Uh, that, that this holds um, a dot product b plus c is equal to a b plus a C okay. I'll drop I'll drop the, uh, the arrows for that one. It's too many arrows. So I want to prove the distribution law of uh, for uh, dot products. All right. Uh, now that's that's quite easy to do yeah, just by drawing a picture in the in the right way. Um, 
we need three vectors in this case. So if I, what I'm going to do is it's arbitrary enough to let A, is that white? No, good enough. We can let at least one of them run along the, the x-axis. Let's just define the x-axis that way. Now we have two other vectors. I'll call them b and c. And I'm going to put b starting here. And I'll put him in the blue. Let's say that's b. Now, uh, a third vector is involved here. Um, I'm going to put it started at the tail of B, and I don't know what direction it goes, but uh, I don't know, let's say it just bends a little bit this way or something. And different color, this color. I'm going to call that C. All right. Now, <coughs> first, <coughs> uh, What I want to uh, show here is that the sum of these two vectors, uh, dot with A, which is a, this vector, is the same as this, this dot with A plus this one dot with A. Okay? So uh, we can see the projection of B along A this one in something like this way, right? And I can draw another one of that color in here. That there is the B cosine of this angle. I'll call it uh, projection B along A. This is B's color. Now I I could draw C down here and have it go here, but I think it should be clear enough. But the projection of C along A is uh, a length from here to here, let's say. We will make this one green. So this here This length is the projection of C along A. Okay, so the sum of those two projections is the distance from here to here. It's not very really flat, but sum of uh, projections. So that's e equal to, um, by definition, because the projection is our definition, um, that's A B plus A C. Uh, 
This is just by definition. Okay. Now, uh, so, okay. Uh, now, let's look at the sum of the vectors B and C. So that would be this vector here, red for once. This vector here is um, B plus C. What gives me sure that I'm talking about a vector sum, not another kind of sum. Now it should be clear that uh, the projection of this summed vector, okay, is the same length as this here, the sum of these two projections. So therefore we proved the di distribution law. We haven't used any x's and y's or thetas or cosines or anything. Just simple uh, vector addition, geometric reasoning. Okay, now, now that we've proven that, <laughs> Uh, the, the next thing is the following. Um, first, it, it is evident by definition uh, perpendicular vectors. Uh, have scalar product zero, right? Because the angle between them is zero, so they don't have any projection along either of them. So uh, that that just follows by the definition. We don't have to write anything down or do any, do any computing. Uh, so now I'm going to invent two special kind of vectors that are perpendicular. One vector, a unit vector, along the x-axis. Now we can bring the axes in. Uh, but I'm going to draw it more than bigger than the unit vector. These need magical colors. Well, I don't have magical colors. I don't know what, why this is not working. What's magical? What's like candy? Like the wizard of oh, here we go. Here we go. It's uh, here. Ignore <clears throat> is a unit vector. Along the x axis. And we give it the name I. With a little hat on top. It's hard to see, but I'll change color. And another one, uh, oops. 
I'll put them the same color for now. Same thing, this one's called at J. Now they are unit vectors and they're perpendicular. Okay? And we have our distribution uh, law that we prove. Now I better switch to something more brighter so we can see. Um, it should be clear that in any number of dimensions, well, we only have two here, we can write any vector um, from the discussion previously, any vector uh, p equals some scalar quantity, uh, what do I want to call it? Let's say, uh, uh, let me see. Okay, if it's called P, then I'll say P. I don't know, but then I can't use my subscripts. <laughs> okay, well, it's going to have to be P. I need to find the letter subscript in my thing. X. Uh, I'm going to do it this way. P1 for the first axis uh, times plus P2, some other scalar quantity. Right. Now we use a break color. I can write any vector this way. Oh, I should use small. I'll use small letter. Next, I can do this again. No one. I'm not happy about that blue thing there. It's, it's waiting to do something. God knows what. Change moves. Okay. <clears throat> so any vector can be written this way. Um, and now we have our distribution wrong. And we know that uh, these are um, perpendicular. So their product is um, uh, zero, okay? Uh, actually, I should have just called this x and y. x, y, well, anyway. So, so for two vectors, um, x and y, let's have the, I'll take two vectors, uh, p, I'll use x and y. And put the subscript there. X one plus Y one okay. P1 and another vector. I think you can see where this is going.
All right, now I'm going to compute the dot product. Given the definition, no, you know, just, just the projection thing that we already discussed. These are scalars. So P1 times P2, if we multiply those out, we get um, X1, this term times this term. Uh, and then the dot product of i with itself. What I'm using here is the uh, distribution property that we just proved. Uh, I'm imagining there are brackets and I'm using the distribution as you would normally in math. Uh, so the next term is x2 times this one times this one, but that's zero because the dot product is zero for those. So the cross terms are all zero. So I get one more term. There's only only one other term survives. See if you understand what I mean. The, the cross terms involve dot products because I'm, I'm using the distribution rule that we proved which says that we can distribute the dot product and I've done that and those ones came out zero and I'm left with this but I is a unit vector and J is a unit vector and they're uh, parallel to themselves, so their dot product is 1, and I get x1, x2 times y1, y2. Same result. Now, I haven't referred at all To any, ma any any mathematical formula or anything, just just geometric reasoning has uh, brought us to this conclusion. I mean, there is no reference. The only reference to <clears throat> a coordinate system was uh, introduced right now when we wanted to see what what that you know what we learned. Uh, would tell us about the dot product in terms of or the coordinate axes. <clears throat> uh, the dot product obviously just can't vary with um, that rotation or displacement uh, because we never even mentioned those things. It didn't matter, right? So we proved that. We don't need to do anything more to prove that. We know that perpendicular vectors uh, dot product are zero, and all the other stuff follows. Uh, and the, the, there's no more to prove than anything than that. That's the entire proof. Uh, you might think maybe if there's three dimensions, it's more complicated. But no, it's not. It's exactly the same reasoning. Uh, we're talking about the projection of one vector along another, and that will be the sum of, of the pro I mean, of the project in exactly the same way that arrow added up to the sum of the bits and pieces. It does so in, in any number of dimensions. Uh, Okay, so now we have a powerful tool, which I'm, and I'll have to quit. But one of the things that you can do, and what, one of the ways that, for instance, before I go, that I can do this, I can select this thing. You see? I didn't click on it. 
If I click near it, if I click here, it doesn't get selected, even though I'm in its rectangle. I can compute how far away the thing is from the line using the dot product. I have it so it has to be about there, about 10 pixels away. And um, and the reason the reason the dot product helps is because the way to compute the uh, distance from a, a given point to a line is to look for the point on the line uh, where a line drawn from a given point p say some point if I draw a line and this is uh, perpendicular to the, the vector, whatever this vector is called, A or whatever, then that would be the shortest distance. Any other position along the line would be a longer distance. That should be almost, almost self-evident. You know, um, any other point that's not perpendic meeting perpendicularly would be a part of this triangle, right? And the longest side of the, of a triangle, of a right triangle, uh, is, is, is not the perpendicular one, it's the, it's the, uh, hypotenuse. Now, of course, they're the endpoints to think about anything, and I work it out, and I you know, don't allow, uh, I take that into account in my, in my calculation, but the calculation is so simple, it doesn't involve any geomet serious geometry or anything, uh, it's, a, it's a trivial calculation to find the distance from a point to a line. Now, in three dimensions, uh, you know, suppose there were another axis in, in the world going this way, right? It, you, you can have, it's possible to have uh, two lines that are not parallel, that don't meet, right? I can have a line... Line mode, let's say. A line like this, that maybe it's going into the page and out this way, and then you could have another one that goes on top or underneath it, and they don't meet. Okay, let's say these, this is going on top. And it might be that uh, their closest point might be here, you see, in three dimensions. And that, that, that occurs when these two, when the line connecting the two lines uh, is perpendicular to both lines. That's the closest point. And, uh, and Computing that and calculating that and proving that is totally trivial using the dot product. Okay, that's all I have to say about the dot product for now. See yeah. you.